Hi, hello, I'm Marina, that one girl that likes to talk a lot about houseplants, and welcome to Millennial Planter. Hey guys, I am officially at max capacity here in the plant room because I put a lot of plants outside for the summer and they pretty much double in size and it's a little bit overwhelming. I did not mean to bring so many plants outside, but I just, during the growing season, they just do so phenomenal outside, especially my Hoya, especially, actually not even especially, just every plant does phenomenal outside. I mean, I did have a couple that struggled a little bit, but those are just uh, one-offs. I'm blaming myself and <laughs> me not properly caring for them prior to bringing them outside. But yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get into that. If you haven't been able to tell, I am sharing all of the planty updates on my plants I brought outside during the growing season. I have been slowly bringing them in throughout the past month because we are in uh i don't know if it's false fall or if it's just fall i mean it is officially fall and it has been dipping into the high 40s low 50s here in georgia and uh well my tropical plants need to come inside so it has been a slow and steady thing i've been doing because i didn't want to overwhelm myself and bring them all in at once they do stay relatively pest free but i do have a lot of spiders that like to hang on to my plants I also will get like slugs or millipedes, centipedes inside the soil. So usually I will just bring them into my bathroom and sort of quarantine them for about a week and just let whatever is in there come out. Sometimes I will repot the plant. Uh, a lot of times actually I will repot the plants because their roots just go absolutely crazy. I mean, the roots I've had on some of these plants were insane. I have massive pots now just because their root systems are so insane. Usually I will repot them and then I will spray them down with some sort of horticultural spray, Captain Jack's dead bug brew, and slowly bring them in and introduce them into my plant room and find places for them. So that's where we are now. I have brought in almost every single plant. I have, I think maybe four, three or four more plants outside that I still need to bring in, but I'm really just <laughs> waiting to the last minute to bring those in because they are bigger plants and I have to find space for them. I have all of this area of my plant room just completely covered with big plants. I have another grow light coming. It's just, it's a lot. So let's get on into the updates because they're really exciting and I can't wait to show you guys. I ended up actually moving a lot of Hoya outside. A lot of my Hoyas do really, really well uh, in the summer in that humidity. They just love the heat. They love the indirect sunlight they're getting because they're underneath a tree. So they're getting like a really good shaded area. And I think the heat mixed with the humidity just is chef's kiss for them. So one plant that did really, really well for me was my Hoya Chayubiana. I did show this one in my recent favorites video, but it just did so well. It was stuck on this one sad little tendril for about a year. <laughs> it did nothing. It had two sad leaves and this tendril didn't grow. It didn't even try to put out a new leaf, nothing. I stuck it outside immediately. It put out this whole new tendril and four new leaves. So it was pretty amazing to see. It even has baby leaves coming in now, which is really exciting. Uh, actually, it has four baby leaves because it has those leaves there as well. So it has actually done pretty well acclimating from outside to inside. I do have it underneath one of my brightest grow lights in my grow rack, but she's just amazing. I am so happy to get her growing again because I was really sad that she was stunted for so long and you could just see these huge, beautiful paddle-like leaves. Oh, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with big leaf hoyas. They are just my jazz and now she's very top heavy. So I definitely need to, I guess, trellis her because she's constantly falling on my shelf and it's kind of annoying. The next plant I'm really excited to share is one genus that I am not 
into at all, which is a carnivorous plant. And this is my pitcher plant. So I know it doesn't look great right now. I kind of let it get too dry when it was outside because it hasn't rained recently. So she got really thirsty, but I eventually I brought her inside. I replanted her. She is in a mix of sphagnum moss and bark and a little bit of coca coir. But I finally got her to pitcher while she was outside, which is amazing. I got this pitcher plant from a friend as a cutting. I rooted the cutting successfully, which is a, a huge accomplishment for me because uh, that took a lot of patience, <laughs> a lot of patience, but I grew it out and now she's this beautiful thing. She did have a longer vine and the vine kind of died off. I'm not sure why, so I cut that, but I'm just really excited that I got some pictures from her and I heard the key to getting these pit to picture is a lot of sunlight. And my mom has this huge, beautiful pitcher plant. It is quite easily three times the size of me and hers pictures all the time. And that's because it is in a south facing window. So I put this underneath one of my brighter grow lights and hopefully I can get more of these beautiful, adorable little cups and maybe it'll catch some fungus gnats because we've been having a little bit of a fungus gnats issue recently. And I think she would love to have some gnats to feast on. I know nothing about carnivorous plants and I'm always trying to learn more. I had a Venus flytrap at one point that I did not do well with and surprisingly they do like a lot of water so I'm told and I am an overwaterer but I, I can't grasp the concept of carnivorous plants. So definitely leave your tips down below if you have any for me and helping this gal thrive. There is really good humidity here in the plant room so I don't think humidity is going to be a problem. I think my problem before was definitely light. She was in a lower light area so hopefully now under the grow lights we'll get some more pictures and she will just be happy. I did kind of break a leaf off which is sad. Sorry about that. Okay, now I think I'm gonna go to a sad plant and that is going to be my variegated, my outer variegated Hoya Compacta. So you can see she is definitely a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> I mean, just look at this bare stem here. We have a yellowing leaf. She literally, the only growth she did this past summer was those leaves right there. Yes. So what is that, two leaves she grew outside, which I just, I don't understand. And I've told y'all, I struggle with compactas. The regular green compacta and this outer variegated one just don't grow for me. I know they are extremely slow growers. So I'm trying to practice patience, but now she's even starting to get some browning edges in. She's just not doing well. And I'm debating if I should just chop her up and start all over. I actually think I might do that. And hopefully that'll get her to be happy. There's so many like spider webs on here. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's spider mites. It doesn't look like spider mites. But yeah, she just, she did not like the outside. I don't know why. I don't know what she wants from me. My Mauna Loa grows <laughs> fantastic. So... I'm starting to think it's you and not me. What do you guys think? <laughs> I try not to get let her get too dry. Um, she's in a good, well-lit area. And yeah, she just hasn't grown at all. And I'm kind of over it at this point. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to chop her up and start again. And we'll see what happens from there. <laughs> and then maybe I'll go to the big box store and buy a bigger one. Because I do love compactas. They are super cute. Another plant I'm really bummed about and just <laughs> am disappointed. <laughs> it's my Hoya elliptica. We have been on a journey, Hoya elliptica and I. I sun bleached it really bad in my grow tent and I think that really stunted a lot of its growth. So I ended up propagating it and that's how we ended up with two plants in here. Stuck it outside and she did nothing absolutely nothing there's no signs of even a wanting to start a new tendril or a new leaf no signs of new growth at all in fact i did have some leaf scarring which makes me feel like maybe she has mites of some sort which is really ironic because typically 
you don't get pests when you have your plants outside just because of all the natural elements and <laughs> there's so many spiders that make homes in my plants and I know that they're munching on whatever pests try to attack my plants. So it could have been slugs. I do have a slug problem every year. Um, usually they don't go after my Hoya and usually this isn't what slug damage looks like, but that's really the only thing I could think of. But yeah, Hoya Elliptica, she's just been on the struggle bus since I sun bleached her, which I'm so sorry. Uh, it's, it's really sad because I've wanted this Hoya for so long. I never thought that I would get this Hoya um, because for a while they were going for a very high, high price. <laughs> so I'm not going to give up on her yet. I, I I don't know what I'm going to try. Maybe I'll try putting her in some sort of container and really just upping the humidity and seeing if that helps because high humidity is probably the only thing I haven't tried with this elliptica other than when I was propagating her. And when I was propagating her, she did do well and grow roots really well because she was in that propagation bin. So maybe that's what I'll try next with her. And hopefully next time you see an update, she will be a lot happier. On a positive note though, I don't know if you noticed, but I have my Orbifolia right here in the corner and you guys, I don't even know if she's going to fit on frame. Just hold on a second. <laughs> oh, look at this beast. She is massive in a i don't even know what size pot this is but you can just tell like the head comparison she's in a massive pot i had her in a 10 inch terracotta pot for probably the past two years i got this gal in 2019 and the past two years i've also put her outside and she has always been very thirsty so i knew she was needing a repot i just kept putting it off but this year i decided to finally repot her because a root bound plant in terracotta is really hard to keep up with and I knew that she was going to be even more thirsty once I brought her inside and we started putting the heat on when it started getting cold. So I got this massive pot for her and it's in plastic so hopefully she will be super happy but we can see some damage from slugs which is so unfortunate. I did even have to cut off some of her leaves because they were just so severely damaged like this one here that looks like a leaf cutter like just went to town but i know it was slugs because i see the slugs all the time all over my house i never see them on my plants but i do see the damage it could also be caterpillars as well but they really went to town on her leaves they go to town on her every year so i really should have been more proactive about it this year but i just didn't Honestly, I didn't really think about it. <laughs> but anyways, her leaves got massive and I am really happy about it. I'm not complaining about her tattered leaves. She has new leaves that are coming in that are gonna grow beautifully. And yeah, I'm just really happy that I have this Orbifolia still. This was my first wishlist plant that I ever acquired. The only Calathea I will ever have in my collection or Gapersha. And she's taught me a lot. We've been through a lot. We've been through fungal infections. We've been through underwatering. We've been through being super root bound. We've been through different households. So I really love this plant. I'm still debating if I should keep her here or put her downstairs. Last year, she was in my bedroom all year where she did pretty well. So I might put her back down there. I'm not sure yet, but she has a bigger pot and she even has her own massive plant stand. So she's a true queen living her best life and hopefully she will keep killing it while she's inside. Monster Deliciosa. You can see she has a new adorable new leaf coming in with midrib fenestrations. So I am so dressed to see that. Uh, her leaf did come in a little tattered though. Once again, I think that's more slug damage, unfortunately, but she grew two massive leaves while she was outside. And actually maybe she grew three, I don't remember, but <laughs> Uh, this is my only Monstera now, aside from my variegated Monstera. There was one point where I had six 
monsteras in my collection, just regular green monsteras in all various stages of life. And I realized that was a bit obsessive, so I had to get rid of some of them. And this is the one I decided to keep and I'm so happy because she just has absolutely stunning leaves. And yeah, Monstera Deliciosa is just such a good classic. And I feel like when you get one Monstera, you can't just have one, you need to have multiple. I know so many people with multiple Monstera Deliciosas in their collection, and that's because they're just so amazing and they're so rewarding and they teach you a lot about plants. And yeah, I'm really glad to have grown with this Deliciosa and I'm really happy to put her outside every year because she just gets bigger and bigger. But with that being said, I did unfortunately have to rehome two of my plants, which was my Ficus Burgundy and my Diffenbachia Camouflage. So I have two Camouflage. Uh, I did that video earlier this year where I chopped my massive one in half and they both just did phenomenal outside. This is the one that I kept, so I do still have one. She put out a new pup. She has new leaves coming in. She's amazing. I can't wait to bring her inside. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put her yet, but the top half that I cut um, did drop some leaves while it was growing roots, but eventually it established itself and just took off. And so uh, I couldn't have two big Diffenbachias. I already have my reflector and my Camille and Diffenbachias just get massive. So I rehomed that one. And then same thing with my Ficus Burgundy. That one actually was really painful to get a giveaway. It kind of broke my heart because it was just so pretty. I love, love that ficus so much. I even debated keeping one of the stems because there were three plants in that pot, but I just, I couldn't. I physically don't have any more space. Hopefully the person that I gave her to will take good care of them. She did bring both of them. Uh, and yeah, those were sad to give away, but it had to be done. So my next one, uh, since I was just talking about different bakias, this is my reflector who's doing great. Once again, some more slug damage. I don't know if that's going to show up, but she does have some holes in her leaves, which is unfortunate, but she's still doing really well. She's so pretty. I never really noticed how much I loved Diffenbachias. Um, they truly are just, uh, oh man. There's always some type of noise. Now the tornado alarms are going off. It's a warning. They do every Wednesday. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but let's just wait because <laughs> they are uh, pretty apocalyptic sounding. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> but uh, Diffenbachia Reflector, yes. Diffenbachias have a special place in my heart and that is because my first plant when I got into plant collecting was my Diffenbachia Camille. And that Diffenbachia actually has just gotten too unruly for me to bring inside. So I'm gonna take some cuttings and propagate them and then leave the plant outside and see how it does throughout the winter. I don't think it's going to do well, but I can't, I just, I don't have space. I'm sorry, I keep repeating myself, but I, I don't. Um, okay, so Kim, uh, Reflector. Did phenomenal. She dropped a couple leaves when I brought her inside, but that's fine. Divimachia are low key kind of divas. They do like a lot of light and they do like a lot of humidity. So that is the key if you struggle with Divimachia. Some more Hoya I put outside that did really well. Hoya Carii. I have just come to the conclusion that she is just one of the slowest growing plants in the world. Um, she only put out this leaf, but that's good because she has not put out a new leaf in over a year. So I will take it. I will take it. She's still super cute though. I really love Hoya Caria. Hoya Chelsea did phenomenal. I had her in my favorites video of September and just look at these vines. So cute. I love her, adore her. She's amazing. Hoya Rotusa um, <laughs> didn't grow at all, but also didn't die. You all know I struggle with Hoya Rotusa. This is my longer one. I have a smaller one and this is my longer one. I heard that they're cold growers, so maybe now that it's fall, the temperature's dropping, it will start to grow for me a little bit more. But uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not mad about this. She's she's super cute. She's in too big of a pot, I will say that, but it's fine. Hoya Fitchii did really well. I was kind of nervous about this one because I did go ahead and cut it when I didn't want to cut it um, for a trade and 
I put her outside uh, because I wanted her to just bounce back really nicely and she did. You can see that new tendril there. She has a new leaf so she's doing really well and I'm excited about that. Hoya Australis also did phenomenally well. I had to repot her in a bigger pot but yeah such an easy growing Hoya. I feel like the Lisa is a faster grower though. My Lisa grows like crazy and this Australis not too much which is interesting, but that just could be because of my conditions. My Australis Lisa has always been a pretty decent light. I'm really happy with this growth on Australis. Look at that. Oh, she's just so pretty. And now we are down to my last two plants. Once again, these two plants did kind of struggle. I ended up putting one of my philodendron varicosums outside just to experiment because I know a lot of people put anthuriums outside. They put more sensitive philodendrons outside. So I wanted to see what happened. And I do have a lot of philodendron varicosums. So she did really well. She grew really well, but she just got annihilated by slugs. So I ended up chopping her up, but you can see the slug damage or it might be caterpillar damage there. And that's pretty much what her leaves looked like throughout. Like she just, they went to town on her, uh, which was really unfortunate because she wasn't even directly on the floor. She was inside the pot of my Diffenbachia camouflage. So I don't know how that happened, but that's the stump which is obviously like fully rooted. Oh, and it does have a tiny little new growth point. Well, that's really exciting and unexpected. I didn't really expect much from the stump because even though it has well-established roots, it was just really sad and kind of pathetic looking, but I did and take a lot of cuttings. I think I ended up with four cuttings in here and once again, you can just tell from the holes and stuff how bad they were just eaten up but they're doing really well they are starting to grow some very little roots so it was kind of a double-edged sword the plant grew really well but got annihilated but i ended up with more of the plant and <laughs> philodendron varicosum is one of my top favorite plants one of my top five favorite plants of all time so i'm not mad about it the last plant on here is my dragon jade who I'm actually kind of shocked this plant didn't do well because it is a Dischidia, a Dischidia, a Dischidia. And I've heard that they do really well in really high humid places and it is really uh, humid here in the summertime. So I thought she was going to take off and unfortunately she didn't. I do see some new leaves though, some new tiny baby leaves since I brought her in. So maybe the key was higher light because the area that they're in don't get high light at all. And now she's really close to a grow light and I see some new leaves. So maybe that's the thing um, with Dragon Jades. I struggle with the Shidias a lot, which is weird because I do so well with their cousins, Hoya, but me and Biscidia, we just don't get along. I can't figure them out and I don't know why. So if you have any tips for me on growing these plants, please drop them in the comments down below. I love Dragon Jade so much. They're just so funky looking. I want a long trailing one. I want to put it in a cute face planter because that would just be the best pairing ever. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can get some growth now that I have her under that grow light. And that wraps it up for all the plant updates. I keep looking around to see if I forgot anything because I think I did, but I still have the plants outside that I'll show whenever I bring them in. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please share any care tips you have with me with those plants in the comments down below. Also, let me know if you bring your plants out for the summer. I always tell myself, well, starting this year, I kept telling myself I'm not going to bring so many plants outside in the summer because bringing them in is always such a hassle and there's just so many bugs that I don't want to deal with every year. So I don't know, we'll see what happens next year. Uh, next year, I really don't think I will, but I'll probably end up putting Hoyas out there. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all are staying safe, staying happy and healthy, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.